Located on Indiana University's Bloomington campus, the Metz Carillon is a familiar sight and sound for the campus community. But this imposing musical tower is also a bit of a mystery. Looks like a like a spaceship, like a like a rocket. I call it SpaceX. I just know that it was built, I think, for the 100 year celebration of IU, I think. I thought it was for like um, the weathering service and stuff like that. I actually one time passed through there and I tried to go in it, but it has a lock. So I think it'll be cool to and like to people to see it and appreciate it more. If you could go in and see the whole bell like structure thing. Wade Fitzgerald is a graduate student in the organ program at the Jacobs School of Music at IU. He's also the associate instructor of Carillon, teaching an elective course open to any Jacobs student interested in learning how to play this unique musical instrument. So a Carillon is a keyboard instrument. It's a relative of the piano or the organ. Uh, what makes it unique is how it uh, produces sound. So Carillons make sound through cast bells. Um, you can contrast that with piano or organ. The piano does it through strings, organ does it through pipes. Dating back to 16th century Europe, carillons were initially used as a means of timekeeping, but gradually evolved into finely tuned musical instruments. It's a very straightforward uh, mechanism. Uh, you'll see these things that look kind of like the end of broomsticks sticking out of this console here. And uh, you play those with your fists and um, when I press the key, or baton as they're called on a carillon, you'll see this cable moving up and down. That cable runs up through the ceiling over our heads and attaches to the clapper inside a single bell. And so when I press it, it tugs the clapper against the inside wall of the bell, causing it to ring. And uh, so that's how the instrument produces sound. So. Uh... Something like that. Originally built in 1970, the Metz Carillon sat in the northeast corner of IU's campus, on the highest point in Bloomington. However, it was far from any foot traffic, and its open design made it hard to hear all the bells clearly and exposed them to the elements. In 2017, plans were made to relocate and redesign the Carillon so that it could be better appreciated by the broader campus community. Unveiled in 2020, as part of IU's bicentennial celebration, the redesigned Metz Carillon stands 127 feet tall and sits in IU's Arboretum at the heart of campus. 65 bells, ranging in weight from 17 to 12,000 pounds, are arranged above the playing cabin in circular chambers specifically engineered with acoustics in mind. The Metz Carillon is unique primarily because of its design. If you're standing outside the tower and you look up, you see these things that look like blinds all around the belfry. Those are called louvers. And uh, what they do is they sort of blend and balance the sound. And it also focuses the sound down toward the listener. And while the bicentennial Metz Carillon sounds much better, its more central location on IU's campus does present new problems. People might want to hear you perform. Nobody wants to hear you practice. You had a chance to practice it much since then? And so along with the new Mets, IU commissioned a practice carillon that mirrors the real thing, almost. The practice carillon is limited in that um, the touch weight is uniform. So like uh, this note and this note are the same weight. They're not the same weight on this, on the real instrument. So um, that's a little problematic. And the first time you take a piece from the practice carillon to the real carillon, it'll throw you off a little bit. Which makes time performing on the real instrument that much more valuable. You know, the carillon has a huge dynamic range. It's a very expressive instrument. So I can bring it almost to the key bed and just barely tap it, get a very soft sound. Or I can come from above and get a very loud sound. Yeah, you can get a huge range of expression with this instrument. Subtle as it may be, there are drawbacks to playing an instrument larger than some buildings. 
The sort of lack of direct contact with your audience is definitely an unusual part of playing this instrument because this is already such an uncommon instrument that so few people know about and uh, most of them don't get to see how it's played unless, you know, I bring them up for a tour afterwards. It's also just a really sort of exhilarating feeling when you're playing something and you know that everybody within like a quarter mile radius or further can hear you. So um, when I play this instrument, I feel like I'm part of, you know, the sort of soundtrack of the community or the campus, and, and uh, that's one of the things I like most about it.